This is Snake. It's a pretty simple game where you control a snake that moves around the screen eating food. Every time you eat a piece of food, you get bigger and earn a point in doing so. But it makes it harder to maneuver around the screen. If you hit a wall or yourself, you die. Really simple rules, right? Well, I had an idea. What if instead of controlling the snake, you controlled the food instead? This is the making of Inverse Snake. Before I can even attempt to implement this idea, I actually need to make Snake to begin with. So let's get to coding. And now, I have a window. God, coding is hard. After a little while, I managed to make a segment, and it can now move around. And then came adding segments to the snake, and... How many times am I going to get these vector exceptions? Well, after picking fights with the standard library for a while, I now have a snake. And I can make the snake bigger by adding a segment to the end. Each segment is stored in a vector, and I can simply add a segment to the back using the pushback method. I then shift all of the segment's positions forward after moving the head, and it creates the movement of the snake. With the snake implemented, it was now time to make the food. Making the food was rather simple. I simply made a food class, and if the snake's head intersects with any instance of the food, then the snake gets bigger and the food respawns somewhere else. The only problem, of course, is you have to make sure that the food actually spawns in an area where the snake isn't. So I simply added a check to make sure that the food doesn't immediately intersect with the snake. While I was programming this, I also was experimenting with ways to show the front of the snake, and I came up with this total abomination. Looks totally bizarre. Anyway, with all of that out of the way, now it's time to confront the first major obstacle of this project. Since I want to make snake where you control the food, the snake needs to actually move automatically. So I wrote an AI. It's not actually an AI. So here's how it works. The snake has a target, which is simply a piece of food. And depending on the distance away, it will move in the direction that gets it closer to the food. Only one problem. It doesn't avoid itself. Using an unbelievably crude method where I make a copy of the snake and then move it to see if it dies, I can simply rotate the snake's head until it could safely maneuver and then make its way back to the food. Of course, this isn't perfect, because the snake can still trap itself, and die. But for just being an algorithm and not an AI, this is a pretty darn accurate way to automate the snake. For fun, I decided to increase the size of the grid just to see how long this algorithm could last without the snake dying. Anyways, the next thing to do was making it so that I could actually control the food. And with a little copy and paste action, I could now move the food, just like the snake. Easy. There was one problem initially, though. You see, I originally updated the food and the snake at the same time. So if the food was right in front of the snake, then the snake could never actually reach the food. So I simply made it so that the snake is either faster or slower than the food. But we will talk more about the speed of the snake in a little bit. But now it's time for something important. Since I painstakingly wrote the snake code into a class, theoretically if I create multiple instances of the snake, they should all avoid each other, right? Come on, man, you've gotta be kidding me. Okay, I think I've fixed it now. Nope. What, are they just giving up on following me? What? Well, after many hours of debugging, I narrowed down the issue to this segment of code, and my god is it a mess. In fact, I was tempted to just erase it all. 
But you know what you do when you have god-awful code that would take hours longer to fix than to just restart? You double down anyway. I somehow fixed the problem by making the code even harder to read, so don't even ask me to explain any of it. Because even I don't understand how it works. But if I run the code now, I actually have multiple snakes following me, and they all avoid each other, even though it does look quite janky. I then decided that if I wanted to have so many snakes, then I needed to add more food. So using my targeting system, I made each snake target one piece of food, but at random. This means that multiple snakes could theoretically go after me at once, or none at all. I did see one problem though. Once a snake was locked onto me, it was virtually impossible to escape. But making the snakes slower would make the game too easy as well. So that's when I came up with an idea. Portals. A portal would simply be a tile that I could run over, and if I did, it would teleport me to another portal that was linked to it. I then implemented this like I did the food to the snake. If the food, aka the player, runs over a portal, it moves the player to the linked portal and regenerates the portals. This fixed the problem and I decided to add two sets of portals for a little more action. I also added an animation, and the animation frame syncs with the portals that are linked together. So if you have a keen eye while playing, you can actually differentiate between the two sets of portals, so you know exactly where you're going to go. Now at this point I started to realize that this wasn't just a fun little experiment anymore. I did what I didn't intend to do. Make this into an actual game. So over the past week or so I've actually been finalizing everything, and the game is by no means the best game ever made, but I had a blast making it and I hope you guys have enjoyed watching this video so far. So now it's time to look at the final result. Well here's what the title screen looks like. I hope you guys really like the logo for the game. I spent way more time than I'd like to admit on it. Uh, I didn't make a dedicated settings menu, it's just this little pop-up thing here. But uh, let's actually start a game. So we have easy, medium, and hard. And believe it or not, on easy, at the beginning, you are actually faster than the snakes. And I know I said that you're slower, but as the game progresses, you actually gradually... You say stay the same speed, but the snakes actually increase in speed. But when you start off on hard, it's a lot more difficult. So I'm just going to start off on hard just so you guys can see it better. So let's start a game. Alright, so... Yes, I... <laughs> I added sound effects, and the sound effects aren't very good, but... At least, at least you know what they're supposed to represent. So if I get eaten, for example, if a snake comes over to me, if anyone wants to eat me, there we go. I get that little beeping sound to represent the fact that I've gotten eaten. eaten. And then I also have these portals here, so if I want to teleport through a portal, I just go over it. Got a little blip sound. Now for the UI, I just decided to put it at the bottom because there isn't very much information that I actually have to display. So... If you want to see the score, it's just down below. I'm screwed. And there's the game over. But yeah, every time you go through a portal, you actually do get some bonus points. On top of just staying alive as long as possible. If anybody actually manages to survive and have all of the snakes die, then it'll actually say you won instead of game over. But uh, obviously the goal is to last as long as possible, so if you can drag the game out longer and longer, it's actually better. And that's it. If you guys would like to play this game, I do have it on itch, so there is a link down in the description, as well as shoot that bird, if you are curious. I just want to take a moment to also thank you guys for your support on my previous video. It really does mean a lot, and I have a lot of exciting videos planned, so make sure you subscribe, and if you like the video, and you have any other ideas for things you would like to see me do, I'm open to just about anything. So leave a comment down below as well. Well, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.